Sup gang, it's Savage Cabbage, and today I'm going to be talking about Maple Story 2. Keep in mind, these are just all opinions, and you can take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Nothing that I say here is absolutely final, and you may feel free to share your views on this in the comments down below. Also keep in mind, this is my first and only review that I've ever put. I've been planning to put content on this channel for a while now, but I haven't really gotten the time to it. But ever since Maple Story came out, I felt like I had to do something. There are some improvements to be made, and it would be wonderful if the community was to voice their opinions more and share more about what direction the game should head in so that it doesn't meet the fate of all other MMOs. Death. Or, I don't know, becoming memes. Dead memes. Maple Story 2 is a newly released MMORPG as a sequel to Maple Story. It adds a whole new dimension, literally and figuratively, to the game and implements tons of new features like player made custom items that can be put on the store and effortlessly made and purchased by other people in the community. Uh, I'm going to be going over several things in this considerably extensive review of the MMORPG Maple Story 2. Keep in mind the game hasn't even fully launched yet. It launches in two days as of me recording this video. and the pop But the population is already booming. And considering it's close to launch, it's healthy to get opinions out there to make the game better. Which is where my dumbass plays a role. The game is lit, the story and the characters are diverse, they're simple but enjoyable. The world building is amazing and complex, it's unlike any other game that I've ever seen when it comes to that. Everything connects, and every NPC plays a purpose making the world seem a bit more vivid than other games would have if you believe. It makes it feel alive. Overall, they've done a nice job of world building. There's some top tier voice acting in this game. Like, okay hand emoji levels of voice acting. Are you fucking serious? Was that voice acting? Community and events build off of each other, especially community created events. They're very fun and very nice to participate in. And it makes you feel even more alive and like you're part of this online community. Another aspect that I'm particularly fond of is how the community can display certain posters or, you know, certain, like they can display a ton of images on certain parts of the map and this is this is one of the examples I can provide this is some pristine content whoever placed this clearly has an IQ that is unreachable by any other man woman child or entity in this current world please do more I like seeing the things that the community places on the images it's usually memes it's always memes it always unless it's a hentai picture but usually memes Optimization is beyond anything I've seen. It's always smooth. The frames never drop. There's really no lag anywhere. And I'll get into more of this stuff in detailed sections. Feel free to skip to each section. I'll put timestamps in the description below. So, starting off with the story in the world. World building is underrated and I feel like not many people have talked about it in this game. The world itself is massive. There's a huge map on this game. And that even makes it better because the achievement system is involved wholly with the world. There is tons of world bosses there's tons of achievements out there if you press a button to nuke the world it'll probably give you achievement and it'll probably give you another achievement if you press it 10 more times you got your normal enemies then you got your boss enemies then you got your also elite enemies which are like 
a little bit lesser boss enemies that just kind of give you achievement and all of them of course controlled by the boss baby voice acting is um well i just put a i put screaming in the script but it's so bad it's good on most enemies i'll provide some examples but there's a certain dungeon you kill the the enemy and he goes ah you've slain me Character design is aesthetically pleasing, offering both cutesy and fierce looking characters with a personality to each. I mean, you can tell by these, these little figurine things here that I've placed in my house. They're pretty nice. They're pretty detailed. Pretty cool. They've got smooth animations. But that's to be expected, obviously, of the game, but this game does it particularly well. Um, let's take a moment here. I've already put that there's going to be spoilers. But my boy Jotty, my boy Jotty died. He got, um, you know, it was a sad scene. Alexa play Despacito type of scene. And, uh, precious bean. he was, yeah, he was a precious bean. And it, he was especially... Uh, likable by most people in the community because he starts off with you and you get attached with to him as you begin your journey and as your journey ends so does his life there's some mildly interesting characters and cutscenes but there needs to be a way to recall all these cutscenes like an interesting way would to do that would be by the slim white TV the cutscenes are nice but they can be sometimes intrusive, and a lot of players, especially me, just skip them because they just kind of get in the way of the game, and if you're just trying to level fast, then they'll obviously be in your way. It would be nice if there was a way to recall all these cutscenes in a chronological order later, like a cutscene gallery or something. There needs to be an option to auto-skip cutscenes too, because they're just... They're, they're way too intrusive. They just kind of show up in your face. Especially if it's dungeons. It'll just repeat the same cutscene every single time you run the dungeon. And I'm tired of seeing Cat Van's ugly mug every single time that I run that goddamn dungeon. Now let's talk about controls. You got your basic controls like, you know, WASD, left, right, and everything. And, and then you also got your climbing, which adds a whole lot of verticality to every single map that they've created. You can basically climb up anywhere. In some dungeons, you can even glitch by climbing. But, um, yeah, that's a whole other topic I'll get into later, the dungeons. One thing I really want to see is rotating camera. Because right now, even though it does add a whole new dimension, you kind of feel locked. And a lot of the places just make you feel like you're caged in and it makes the world feel claustrophobic. I feel like if they added rotating camera, it would make the game a lot better. It would give the world yet another dimension to explore it in. Because a lot of the houses that are built by players can't have walls. Like if you, for instance, look at my house. I used to have these walls here up as the same height as the other walls and you just couldn't see shit except like small sections of the house and it just made the environment feel a lot smaller and more closed in. Music is wonderful and enjoyable while maintaining the theme of Maple Story, which is just friendly and it's got like the, the original soundtrack is really nice and you can even play it on different instruments because of the whole one, one of the activities that they give you. Optimization is great. The world is smooth and has little to no frame drops or lag. My dying garbage PC appreciates this game as it doesn't torture it to the point of screaming till it explodes. Now let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay, I would consider the combat of this game heavily based off of, or if not, just straight up action combat. You press a button, 
your character hits, whoever's in that radius gets hit, whoever's in that attack range gets hit. There's no tab targeting, no lock-ons, nothing of that sort. You just hit something and it gets hit. There's an area of effect for everything that you do. You know, something I can definitely give a nod to is the destructible environment and when you hit stuff it kind of slows you down really making you feel the impact of your attacks which is definitely a welcome feature for someone like me who is very destructive it is smooth responsive and the controls feel natural but to me it kind of feels a bit slow but that's just my personal opinion, maybe because the only class I've played so far is the Brainlet class, aka Berserker, where you just, you know, spin to win for days. It's a double-edged blade when it comes to that, because some players will often form a bad habit where they just kind of do the same attack over and over. The game doesn't incentivize chaining attacks, though, or using various attacks. It just gives way too much leniency when it comes to spamming and again that's just something that I'm really really against I feel like people should be more rewarded if they change certain attacks together figure out combos or do more damage and have more payoff if they decide to use different attacks than just holding the same button like I totally don't do it's easy to learn for newcomers but it is harder to master making some room for more hardcore players to be able to play the game and offering them a reason to stay. I feel like there should be more PvP modes with this kind of combat. There should be like some kind of battleground lobby or some kind of uh, matchmaking system where you can enter PvP modes, either sol solo PvP mode or like a 3v3 mode, something like that. Uh, I would suggest a battle royale, but that's already in the game, and um, you know, I can't wait to meet the fantastic, wonderful, and outstanding Fortnite community in this game. If they add Fortnite dance emotes, I'm going to commit Scooter Ankle. The bosses in this game are entertaining and require various methods to beat them, and there's always the Beyblade method, where you just spin the boss to death. And that's the last thing they see is just you spinning as they close their eyes and rest eternally. One thing that doesn't make sense to me is missing in this game. There's like an RNG mechanic when it comes to accuracy. And you can miss your attack even if the boss is in your range or the player is in your range. You just kind of quote unquote miss. I would understand that in an RPG, in a turn based game. In any sort of game where there's targeting a lock-on or some sort of that mechanic. But in this game, it's just action RPG. Where your attacks are, where you will be, is where the enemy will be hit. And I totally believe that that should not involve in any sort of way some kind of mechanic where you can miss even though the enemy's in your range and you've hit them on your screen. Uh, the... Party summon feature is nice. When the game first launched for players who got the Founders Edition, it was 30 mesos to summon. And I got to play around with the summon features and me and my friends were able to interact with it. It was 30 mesos, which is like the in-game currency that you can earn. It's like the gold of this game. Now, for some reason, I think it was bugged, I'm not sure, but they've changed it over to 30 merits, which is the in-game currency that you buy with real money. And I'm not a big fan of that. Make it cost more mesos, but not 30 merits, aka 30 cents to summon your friend. I mean, it's, you know, like people want to play with their friends and not have to rip out their wallets every single time they want their friend to come over to where they are. So it would be very, very nice if there was, or make it free to founders, players, or the, you know, elite whatever club member thing make it more easily accessible for them or cost less as part of the feature for getting the club membership for this game it also costs 30 cents to speak in world chat yes there is chat vouchers but they're usually for channel chat but world chat costs money for some reason 
which is also a bit ridiculous for me. 30 cents to be able to speak there. It's a bit unfair, if I have to say so myself. It's like kind of cornering you, and you can't reach out to a broader audience for anything, if you need help with anything, unless you pay money, which is a bit much. Even though it does give more reason to be in guilds and use guild chat, it would be very nice to have some sort of feature that balances out the whole world chat paying thing. Transmog. Transmogrification. A.K.A. turning a piece of gear into a piece of costume. We can all agree now that every endgame in an MMO is costumes. And if you disagree with me, fight me in real life. So, the feature that I would like is being able to turn a piece of gear that you've acquired into something that you could put in your outfits section. See, currently I've got this wonderful armor here. I need to dye my boots because they're, they're new. They're brand new. But the outfits, I have nothing on there because I just want to display the armor, which is very nice. Let's go ahead into the next section. Classes. No two classes are the same. Every class name is pretty descriptive of what they use and what their job is. You got the knight, who has a shield and a sword, and they are kind of the tanks in this game. You got the priest, you got the archer, the heavy gunner, you got, you know, you got tons of classes. I main berserker, probably going to make tons more berserkers, probably going to make 30 berserkers, and even more on new accounts probably, because I like the berserker. You spin a lot, and that's fun to me. One thing I don't like about the classes, though, is I feel like they either need more sustain or some kind of compensation for how much health you lose, because chugging potions ain't fun at all, and I feel like getting drunk off of potions isn't a fun way to play a game. If anything, they should balance out the potions by making them more potent, but more expensive at the same time, because currently, my health is like 3,000, and I have to chug three potions to get my health all the way up. Elixirs are a different deal, I get it, but they're like, unacquirable anywhere that I've seen so far. I don't know, it's just opinion in the end. Um, there needs to be more healing classes definitely in this game. There's currently one healing class, and currently one tank class. And that needs to that needs to come to change. Maybe add some sort of alternate way to play certain classes where it becomes a healing class instead of a tanking class. Maybe give the gunner like a certain skill tree where it can heal players as well as deal damage. You know, something like that. Something to vary up the classes a little more in their roles and not just keep them locked to one certain role. Uh, now let's move on to the next part. Dungeons. There needs to be a leaving party penalty. I am tired of queuing for a dungeon, getting in the dungeon, and then everyone leaves. Or one person leaves, and drags out the whole entire dungeon experience instead of just, you know, going in there, finishing the dungeon, and getting out. People have no penalty for leaving a party at all. They can just leave as they will, and there's also no matchmaking mode or kind of anything to balance out the fact that someone just left. You can't just queue and then get another person, which is a feature that I think needs to be added to balance that out. Some people argue that, you know, being able to leave instantly or whatever is a good feature and sometimes you queue for the wrong thing or whatever, but hey, that's on you. People in the dungeon shouldn't have to suffer for one person queuing accidentally or having something to do. That's just that's an individual thing that people plan not on the rest of the party who are just trying to run the dungeon. There needs to be some kind of queue requirement for the dungeons as well. Maybe require one priest at least because it is ridiculous how many... That's kind of the main reason people leave is every single dungeon that you ever queue. You end up with like five berserkers and no healers. So what it is is just a tombstone fest over and over. 
and it drags out the dungeon even more because when you die you get a debuff that makes you do more damage and then you die even more because now the dungeon's taking longer than it should because there's no healer because there's no requirement when you queue it just kind of throws you with whoever else queued and you may get lucky or get a healer or you may just get fucked those are the only two options currently there should be a reset dungeon button for if you want to run it with the same party instead of having to leave the party and match make again i've run with a lot of people before and a lot of them just sort of leave even though we would had a nice experience and a lot of them would like to requeue again or reset again but there's currently no button for that which isn't really nice i'd like it if there was some kind of accessible way to just requeue with the same people or just reopen the dungeon instead of having to restart the party now let's move on to the next section <laughs> Activities. The activities in this game are amazing. There is so much to do and it is so distracting. That's why it took me so long to level because there's just so much. Not only is there like custom exploration goals for every single world that you go to, but there is also custom music. And you know what that means. That means memes galore. That means you can have a band play Despacito, and I don't know what's more disappointing. Actually playing it with a group of people, or the amount of people that are going to be cheering and listening to it. You can share the music in-game, and, you know, you can play it on whatever instrument you want, although it would be nice if there is a way to submit the music that you make, or the scores that you make on some sort of gallery, where people can browse and, you know, download the scores or buy the scores somewhere. There is currently a site outside of the game, but I feel like that kind of breaks the immersion, having to go on a whole separate site to get music scores to be able to play. It would be nice if there was an in-game site where you could just do all that. Um, there should be a way to add performances in Queenstown or submitted scores that ties into the whole gallery thing. There should be a way to rate the performances or rate the scores which, you know, either increases their price or kind of rewards the player that performed or made the score, thus adding even more incentive to create music. Currently, the only incentive people have is there's some certain cosmetics, there is, you know, there's more instruments that you unlock. There is some housing stuff, I believe, that you can unlock, although I'm not very sure. Actually, no, I don't think there is, but you do unlock bigger musical scores to be able to produce, and even then... The musical scores are kind of expensive, and it would be very nice if there was a way to get money back out of performing the music that you perform. We're going to go to Tria. Tria is this place in the world. It's like the main hub, and it's also where ears go to die. Hold on, let me unmute my game real quick. Pretty sure it's muted. No one is ready for this. Your ears will bleed till you drown in your blood. Alright, you ready? Ah, uh, this is channel 49. So, let's go to channel 1. In Tria. And this is what I'm talking about. I hope you're enjoying this. Because, I, I doubt that. No one is enjoying this. There's just tons of people playing music at the same time. And it sounds cancerous. And I can't hear myself think. So I'm getting the hell out of here. But yeah, the annoying thing about Tria is people can just play music. And, you know, you're supposed to AFK play music. But the thing is, is when there's so many people doing it at the same time, it feels less like an alive hub world and more of a torture chamber for your ears. Specially designed to destroy your ears. So it would be very nice if there was some sort of if they lessened the hearing range, first of all, on the music, because you can hear it from a pretty good distance away, but they also made it so that you can only play music within a certain range of another player. So you can't just overlap 50 songs because 50 players are AFK playing their music. That's pretty much it for this section, so we're going to go to 
But oh wait, before we go to building. There needs to be a way to mute people's music, certain people, because there's always that one twat that likes to hold the button with the highest note and just kill your ears. There needs to be a way to mute certain people from playing music, because I don't want to hear that shit. Anyways, off to building. building there needs to be a little bit more optimization when it comes to placing blocks in building the game does have a little bit of lag spikes when it comes to that uh, there also needs to be some reduced cost of the blocks because it costs 30 goddamn cents to place a block three blocks is a dollar you know what I could get with a dollar There should be a bulk place or an advanced editing mode for people who want to build large projects without having to waste 30 lifespans. And there should be a replace floor mode or just kind of like a add an entire level or section to the building instead of having to place every single block individually, which is how the building system is now. There should be a way to change the lighting too because a lot of people like to make like second floors or third floors. But then the weird thing that happens with that is the shadows from the top floors kind of, you know, overlay on the bottom floors and overshadow them. And it's just, it's just kind of a mess and you feel like there's a very dark cloud floating above you. A very dark and square cloud floating above you, which isn't, um, isn't pleasing to look at. Some people feel like the building is a cash grab. And some people think that it costs way too much for blocks. I do agree with that. The building costs way too much in this game. There's certain things that just cost way too much. Way more than they should. Like blocks, for fuck's sake, it's a block. You place it, why should it cost 30 cents? And now the last thing when it comes to building is there needs to be an undo feature somewhere. Because I fucked up way too many times. And there was no way to undo my fuck up at all. But yeah, that was my overall review of Maple Story 2. The world is amazing. The game is amazing. The story is pretty nice and it's got some nice characters. Again, this is all an opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. Whether you agree with some ideas, whether you don't, share it. Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, hit that motherfucking like button. I'd appreciate all that, and uh, yeah, I'm out.